We're joined by Dean Chen of Tsinghua University of Beijing. INSEAD is one of your, your partners. How important is it that you um, have partners um, of, with foreign institutes? Has it been beneficial? It's extremely important. Uh, in particular, it's a, not only a, a ordinary business school partner, but a top business school in the world as our partner. Uh, like INSEAD. Uh, it serves many purposes. One, enhance our reputation because they are, you know, in China there are many, many business schools, there are many, many uh, programs, and also many schools they have uh, partners with uh, other business schools in the world. But we are very proud to be in partnership with INSEAD, a top business school in the world. So that enhanced uh, our reputation. But the, more importantly is the substance of cooperation. This is the joint degree or dual degree program in executive education. So students spend half the time in China, Beijing, and half time in Singapore and France. So they truly uh, benefit from this joint program. Our faculty learned a great deal from the faculty of INSEAD, vice versa and students benefit from the diversity of culture. So I think this is uh, extremely, extremely important. So you, you have the uh, EMBA uh, program at the moment. Um, any plans to expand that? No, our first objective is to make this program solid and to gain the international reputation. Uh, we are very happy to see that our co first cohort of the Tsinghua INSEA Joint Degree EMBA program students just graduated last month. So uh, we have completed the first complete cycle uh, of the EMBA education. Now the second class, second cohort, uh, right now they are studying in, uh, on this campus in, uh, in Singapore. So we are now at very acti actively recruiting the third cohort. So we hope that after uh, a few years, this program uh, will be well recognized, not only in China, uh, not only in Europe, but also in the world. You've also had partnerships uh, with Harvard and MIT. Yes. Um, how significant have those been? We have had collective, uh, collaborative uh, partnership with uh, MIT for our MBA programs, uh, which started in 1997, a long time ago. Uh, but that program uh, is our degree, MBA degree, with a certificate from MIT. So we're in, uh, in that sense, we're in a collaborative uh, relationship with MIT. Uh, starting from 2001, we uh, jointly run uh, executive education programs uh, with Harvard Business School. But uh, those are the programs without degrees uh, for executive uh, education. So at the same time, we also have a students exchange program with Stanford, GSB. So we are very proud of being in partnership with all these top business schools uh, in the world. But for each school, we have uh, a little bit different emphasis. For the one with INSEAD, this is the Executive MBA dual degree programs. You mentioned earlier international recognition. Right. Um, is that because you're thinking of expanding at some point overseas, or, or are you thinking mainly of, say, attracting potential MBA students to China? Both ways. Uh, this is because the world economy and Chinese economy are changing so fast. The Chinese economy now the third largest in the world and the economy, Chinese economy, is more integrated with the rest of the world. Uh, ironically, this financial crisis actually demonstrates that part very well. On the other hand, there are many more foreign students are interested uh, in studying or working in China or China-related business. So therefore, the, from the demand side, uh, we know that uh, our business education has to be more international than ever before. So we welcome students from other parts of the world coming to China, to Tsinghua. We also, like our students, have opportunities to go abroad to study and to work. 
So within the, your programs, are you taking an international perspective or are you kind of trying to train people to take up positions within China? Actually, our motto is China roots and global reach. So we want to have uh, our roots uh, still uh, in China and China's economy. This is our uh, advantage, competitive advantage, actually. But at the same time, we want our students uh, to have uh, global perspectives of uh, way of thinking, of uh, doing as well. Xinguan doesn't take part in the FT rankings, but um, from the, the, the last set of rankings, it was pretty clear that uh, Chinese and Indian um, universities, institutes, aren't doing very well and are gaining recognition. And presumably that is going to just pick That's up right. speed. Uh, not only China and India, but also Singapore and Hong Kong. <laughs> so I noticed that, we noticed also, it's uh, Asian business schools uh, uh, moving very fast on that ranking. Uh, we have not uh, participated uh, yet. Uh, we are uh, doing research on that. But uh, regardless, uh, our objective to become a world-class business school um, will continue. Uh, we will work hard for that. Um, ranking, international rankings such as FT is one measurement. It's one measure, but not the only measure. So just uh, briefly, how do you see the development of um, business education in China going from here? Well, business education uh, encompasses many things, from undergraduate to MBA to executive education. Let's narrow it down to MBA education, let's say. Um, China started MBA education in 1991. So in only uh, in, in, uh, in 17 years, uh, it exploded from annual enrollment of 90 students to last year around 25,000. There are over 100 schools are now offering MBA degrees. And uh, the applicants, the number of applicants continue to increase. Uh, so that shows the huge demand uh, for that. On the other hand, um, because the change of the economy, because of the change of the student body, now we see that most of our MBA applicants are born after 1980. Uh, most of them have uh, no brothers or sisters because of the uh, one-child policy. So therefore, there are special considerations uh, have to put into your curriculum. In what sense? In the sense that the students, uh, they, uh, um, they grew up in the environment of one-child family. Uh, they are strong in some aspects but they are weak in other aspects, such as communications, leadership, teamwork, those soft skills. Uh, usually that uh, uh, we want to emphasize in business schools. And they are very strong in knowledge, but may not be strong in particular set of skills. So this is what we discovered, and we want to put more emphasis on that. Multinationals in the past have basically aired grievances or concerns that there aren't sufficient numbers of business people coming through who are capable of joining uh, multinationals. Yes. Do you see that uh, being rectified now? Oh yes. Um, um, I uh, cited on many occasions a research paper by McKinsey three years ago. The coming sh shortage of talent in China. It painted a picture that on the one hand, China educated many, many uh, students in management engineering. On the other hand, there is a looming shortage of the talents that are suitable working in multinationals. If you look at the problems they discovered on top of the lists, number one, language problem. Their students are not very good in English. Number two, communication problems. They are not very good in writing and uh, communicating. Number three, teamworks. 
Number four, problem solving ability. So those are the things exactly you know, we try to emphasize now, which were not emphasized enough in the past. In the past, basically, you know, training MBAs is like training um, a, uh, a uh, master or PhD students. You teach them knowledge by academic discipline and hope they can learn. Um, but that's not enough for managers. So that I think we, are, we already started to address this issue. And we hope that uh, you know, after this uh, uh, reform or restructuring of our curriculum, the students, after taking our program, will be more capable or suitable, not only for multinationals, but for any kinds of business. Dean Chen of Tsinghua University, thanks for joining us on Inside Knowledge. My pleasure, thank you.